Hi, everybody. I'm over in the Science Museum now, and I am really excited to show you one of my favorite things in this entire building. First, I want to say thank you for your patience. We're all learning new things right now, and um, if you didn't get an answer to a question, I really want you to be able to get one. My email address is jpowers at springfieldmuseums.com. I'm sorry, .org, springfieldmuseums.org. If for any reason you didn't get an answer to a question or you want to give feedback, please email me. I love to hear from you. And I just want to remind you that after the next video is going to be for caregivers. We're going to talk about fun and literacy and learning all summer. So let's start looking at this awesome object in the Science Museum. It's one of my favorites. It is a clay map of Africa. And people who make who make art from clay are called potters. And the potters decided to do a, almost like a look from above at the continent of Africa. And so what they created was textures that show the different biomes. The different biomes are like the different habitats of Africa. And I just thought that they sculpted it so beautifully. It's something I really wanted to share with you. I love both art and science, and this is one of the perfect ways that they come together. So here we have this map of Africa. We have the main continent here, and then I wonder if you can guess what this island here is called. If you don't remember, I'll give you a hint. It, there's a movie about this island that has a bunch of funny penguins in it. That's right, it's Madagascar. So let's take a look at this map in this art piece and talk a little bit more about the biomes of Africa. So something interesting about Africa is that the equator runs right across Africa. And the equator is an invisible line around the earth and that's the hottest place on earth. So when we look at there, you can't see the line on the map, but when we look at the map, the equator would run right through here. And so that area of Africa is incredibly hot. And so you see this textured area here that's kind of a green gray. That's the rainforest. You might have heard of the rainforest before. It rains every single day there. And there's more thunderstorm or thunder and lightning in the rainforest than any other place in the world. There's also an amazing diversity of life there. So all kinds of different animals, birds, snakes, lizards, and even people live in the rainforest. It is a rich area just full of natural resources and uh, just a really, really cool place. There's layers of plants from the tallest to the bottom um, where there's not much sunlight on the, on the rainforest floor because so many plants are able to enjoy that rain and that hot sun that you get in the rainforest. And I just think this looks just like the treetops in the rainforest, I think that's really cool. So just north of the rainforest and just south of the rainforest, we have an area called the savanna. Now it doesn't rain as much there. And in fact, instead of having winter, spring, summer, fall, like we do here in New England, that savanna has a dry season and a rainy season. So the animals that live in the, in the savanna really need to be able to adapt to having more water or less water. If you have been to the museum before, most of the animals in African Hall are animals that live in the savanna. So we have the zebra, we have the antelopes, the elephant, uh, the warthogs, we have just so many different ones. The rhino, those animals all live in the savanna. And if you've ever seen the movie The Lion King, a lot of that takes place in the savanna too. So the areas just north and south of the savanna are known as the desert. You probably know a little bit about deserts already, but they are very, very dry places. It takes special adaptations to be able to survive in the desert. Some animals that can live there are snakes, lizards, birds. It takes a lot of hardiness to survive in those deserts. Now this desert that's depicted up here, this whiter area, that is the largest desert in the world. That's the Sahara Desert. And I am not sure how well you can see it, but there's a really tall mountain there too. That mountain's called Mount Kilimanjaro. So those are the hardest places in Africa to survive, those deserts. While the Sahara, or while the Savannah takes up about 40% 
of Africa, those deserts are huge and the deserts are growing. So there's one other biome I'd like to talk about that is in Africa and that is the coastline. So knowing that the equator runs right through the center there, the coolest, that would be the hottest part of Africa. The coolest parts of Africa are actually the southernmost tip and the northernmost tip. That's where industry flourishes. More people live in those areas than any others. While these other areas, there's tons of open space for animals, people do really well at the north and south points. So there's all kinds of trading. There's tons of fishing. This is a plentiful food supply for people in Africa. There's also, they also have wonderful tropical fruits and things that grow there like olives, tomatoes, and oranges. So it makes sense that the highest density population would be in the north and the south of Africa. So do you think that you could take some clay and create something like this? Do you have a favorite kind of area that you'd like to create? So while we have the rainforest, the savanna, the desert, and the coastline here, what about creating, what if you were looking at the United States from above? What if you were looking at New England? How would you use your clay to help create something like this? Do you think maybe you could even be in the museum someday? Have your artwork in the museum? Thank you so much. Again, if you have questions, please email me at jpowers at springfieldmuseums.org. And caregivers, our next video is just for you. Thank you so much for watching.